Welcome back to Attacking Third, and we're welcoming in Savannah DeMello, racing Louisville player and U.S. Women's National Team World Cup player. Savannah, I'm going to start with, you didn't have a cap for the U.S. Women's National Team. You then get named to the World Cup team. You play in the first match and just absolutely hold your own. I know that as a team's performance, maybe it didn't live up to expectations, but personally, every player is going through their own experience and journey. What was it like being in your shoes during the World Cup? Yeah, I mean, it was just an awesome experience. Um, definitely a roller coaster of emotions, but I think I had so many um, great teammates around me, great support. So it was just such a fun and exciting experience, and I was so grateful to be a part of it. Savannah, during this World Cup, I mean, Jenny mentioned it, you get your first start at this World Cup, slotting in for Rose Lavelle's role, who she's got some pretty big shoes to fill. Mm -hmm. How much conversation did you have with Lavelle about that position, the game plan, playing alongside Haran and in that role? Yeah, I mean, I think we had a lot of conversations. Um, she's someone that I've always looked up to and tried to um, embody how she plays. I think she has so many great characteristics. So I just wanted to implement that into the team while also bringing what I um, what I can do well. So we definitely had a lot of conversations with Lindsay, Andy, um, all of us. So that was also awesome coming into an environment where I was learning so much and getting so much great feedback from amazing players. Yeah, I love Savannah that you bring you throughout everything. We've seen it with Race in Louisville now, but we even got to see it on the world stage. So just congratulations that you got to accomplish that. that that's amazing. I think all of us felt this same way. Uh, you have kind of expressed it, the disappointment of the team. And, you know, it wasn't what everybody expected out of this group. I want to know, you know, what what did we miss out on? What did we not get to see from this group? And how excited are you to move forward? And what can we expect out of you guys in this next year leading into a potential Olympics? Yeah, I mean, I think we have so much talent on the team we had. Um, we had so many great young players and we had so many experienced um, older players. So it was a huge bummer not being able to go as far as we wanted to and getting to that final is kind of the standard we set for ourselves as the United States. So falling short of that was definitely disappointing, but I think it's fueling us for what's to come. Um, like I said, we have a lot of younger players, so I think it's just a huge learning point for us and um, getting ready for the Olympics now is what our focus is. Savannah, you talk about learning from the players and the veterans that have been there a long time. We had a segment where we spoke about Megan Rapino and her legacy and how much she's given to the game, and you've gotten to train with her and be around her in this World Cup. What are some of the takeaways you've gotten from being able to learn from her and just be around her with this amount of time? Yeah, she was one of my favorite people on the team. Like, even when I made the roster and it had just come out, she was one of the first people to reach out to me. So just her as a human being is she's one of the awesome, like most awesome people I've met and been able to play with. And just on the field, she was always helping me. Um, we would kind of go against each other and she's like, listen, do this so that this opens up like she was just so great and giving feedback to me and just so awesome on the field. So I'm definitely going to miss her, but I'm so honored that I was able to be able to play with her for that short period of time. She definitely leaves a, a legacy everywhere. OK, Savannah, I'm switching gears a little bit here. We're, we're going to talk NWSL and I want to talk specifically the Challenge Cup, because while you were down under, your team went on an incredible Challenge Cup run and they did it without so many World Cup players. What in, what allowed your teammates and this Louisville side to go on such a good run, taking Louisville all the way to the semifinals of the Challenge Cup? Yeah, I think we have so many good players on our team, and I think it was a great opportunity while the World Cup girls were gone for the players who maybe haven't been playing as much being able to step up, and I think that's exactly what they did. And I think it's just awesome we're going to like um, a semifinal for the first time in this club's history, and we're just really excited and want to want to win and obviously get to the final. But a huge um, congrats to like the team and just the players that made that happen. One of the things that's different about the Challenge Cup this year, it's during the season, but there's a trophy on the line. You just mentioned that, Savannah, but there's also some big money on the line. Money, money, money. Yeah. <laughs> Did that change your guys' perspective on how you competed in this tournament, knowing that, hey, not only can we get a trophy for our club, but if we win just a few amount of games, we could actually win a good pot of money as well? Yeah, I definitely think money is always, like, something – obviously that's thought about but i think what's really fueling us is just the trophy and we want to bring a trophy back home to louisville 
Um, but the money is just like a cherry on top, I think, for us. But definitely throughout the tournament or throughout the Challenge Cup, we just wanted to get three points and win for our city. So that's kind of what was fueling us. Well, we hope that you guys make it. And I have a question. With you coming back into this Louisville squad, what parts of your game are you looking to improve or work on the latter half of the season going into Challenge Cup and NWSL Championship potentially? Yeah, I think I just want to be more like a leader on the field, um, talking more, kind of trying to coach girls like where I think that we should be um, in that sense, but also just like leveling my game up. I want to play quicker. I want to be more dynamic, um, more dangerous. So I think I just want to be better for the team because I think um, if like the World Cup players are playing better, we're all playing more confident and like the whole team just plays better all around. So I think just bringing that confidence back and um, helping the team in any way I can. Okay, Savannah, on Monday, we had a segment and we looked at the teams that could potentially make the playoffs. And who did I choose, ladies? <laughs> well, I chose well, well, Race well, and Louisville because I love the way that you guys play. And you mentioned some of those players coming back confident from the World Cup. I, I think Katlana and Kanu are two of those players, but Ari Borges, for sure, one of those players. Yeah. But I, I love what Kim Bjorkagren asks of your team. And, and the, the, specifically what, how you get to play on this team, what do you like about your role within this group and really how fluid it is when you guys go and attack? Yeah, I love how free I think I can be in the in the attack. Um, my coach gives me so much freedom to kind of play the way I know or I like to play. So I think that just gives me so much confidence to do what I think I'm good at. And I think with the way we press, um, the way we defend, it just kind of allows us to be a lot like be an attacking minded team. And that's. Um, obviously what's most fun for me being an attacker. So I think that's kind of yeah. um, what we want to keep improving on and just get better at. Well, Savannah, you get to do it for a couple more years as well. Two claps for you because you're sticking around in Louisville. <laughs> Congratulations Thank on you. the contract extension. Why? Why do you want to stay in Louisville? I, I really love it here. Um, like I grew up in L.A., went to USC, and – um, everyone was a little nervous for me when I was leaving California and going to Kentucky, but I've honestly found such a sense of community here. Um, and I just love the girls, love the team. And I think we truly have something special here and I just want to keep improving. And, um, like I said, just bringing more, um, emphasis to this club and community. You just want to do more coffee with the midfielders in the car. What's the, <laughs> that's really why you want to stay, right? Um, we, we love to watch you and Jalen Howell in that segment. You guys um, seem like you have a really good friendship. Probably one of the reasons that you guys come in as rookies together and it seems like you've really just grown so much. Okay, but we want to talk a little coffee culture with you because you seriously probably are a connoisseur now, right? If you go to coffee with someone, What's the order that makes you go, hmm? Red flag. I don't red know. Flag That's a red order. flag. I, I don't know if I can trust you now. <laughs> red flag. Okay. See, I used to do this, but I used to get like a like a fully sweetened like vanilla iced latte with like an extra pump of vanilla. Ooh, like, yeah. Too sweet. So now that I'm like a true coffee drinker, I just get like an iced latte. So anytime I hear someone with like a, like a super sweet drink, I'm just, it's a little bit of a red flag. Right. Are you worried okay. about their head? Like a potential headache, too much sugar <laughs> going through their body? Yes, they're literally drinking sugar with a little bit of coffee. And I'm, it's just, <laughs> I, I, I used to be that person, so I can't really be. <laughs> We've all grown up, right, Savannah? Yeah. We've all grown up. I, I like that you're honest with us, though. You're like, hey, I used to do it. Well, you and Jalen, yes. you, you, you have guests in your car while your midfielder is getting coffee in your car. Who is your mm. ideal guest that you mm. would get? Like anyone in the world, who do you want in the car getting coffee let's do, with you? Let's do a male player and a female player. How about that? Sure. What if it wasn't a okay. player? <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, so for I male, I think for me and Jalen, because we are obsessed with Cristiano Ronaldo, so I think that would both be our number one for the male side. Okay. Does he drink okay. coffee? I don't know. <laughs> it's probably not I good enough think, for him, though. right? I, would, I, would I hope so. he's not ordering one of those sugary drinks. <laughs> Imagine. No. no. Um, and then for female, I don't know. I'd probably do, I'm a, like, after being at the World Cup, too, with the girls, like, they're all Swifties. So I think I would love to have Taylor Swift there, especially with her concert and just hear about how all that went down. So... Taylor Swift, I think, for girls. All right. Ooh. Well, she lives in Tennessee. I feel like you guys could make that happen. It's pretty close to you. Oh, 
I did not yeah. know that. Yeah. I mean, maybe, maybe she'll watch this. <laughs> I'm in. Tag her. <laughs> Should we clip this and, and tag Taylor Swift like 700 <laughs> times, see if you guys get, get her on? Please. Yeah. Please do. If she does, I'll invite you guys to the coffee in the middle. Oh! oh. Wow. So that we can We're going to need a bigger car, everybody. <laughs> 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 all right. Thank you so much, Savannah. We'll be seeing you continuing your run with Louisville and in the friendlies against South Africa in September.